Hello, I hope you're all doing well. I'm Summer and welcome to part 1 of my processing series. So here's what we're gonna do in this video. I'll start off by showing you a simple recipe alongside some basics and then throughout the video we'll unlock the full potential of the recipe by understanding the main processing concepts like success rate, mass processing and mastery. And by the end of the video you'll know how to process lightning fast. So naturally this guide is gonna be aimed at beginner and intermediate players, but as always in my videos I also wanna try and give you a more in-depth understanding of the life skill. Now this is gonna be a long guide and if you're looking for specific info feel free to use the chapter marks or take a look at my written guide on processing which this video is based on. Alright, let's dive right into it. First off, let's take a moment to look at the role of processing in the game and how it stacks up against other life skills. Processing serves as the middleman between activities that yield raw materials such as gathering or your worker empire by refining those materials for use in crafting life skills like cooking or trading. Now let's be honest here, when it comes to making money, processing isn't exactly the best compared to other life skills like cooking or alchemy. The appeal of processing are really two things. First, it's super AFK friendly, you can set your character to process for an hour or two on the right recipe so you don't have to babysit your crafting like other life skills. And second, it's pretty easy to do, let me show you. Say I want to supply my cooking with some flour. I can take grain for my storage that my definitely paid and not enslaved workers have brought in. And then I open the processing menu and here I can select from different processing types. There's shaking, chopping, drying and so on. So which one should we choose to make flour? For that we can consult the crafting nodes. To open them you can either hit F2 on your keyboard or do shift left click on any item in your inventory. In the search bar I type in wheat flour and there we go, it says we're gonna use grinding. So we select grinding, toss in the wheat and hit start. And this process takes 6 seconds and after the craft is finished my character keeps on processing until I either run out of materials or hit my max weight. Now let's check how many flour we got. So here you can see we get about 1 to 4 flour per craft. That's a pretty common rate on many life skills. So on average we're getting 2.5 flour per craft. And now you can already see how we're able to turn a profit from processing. We take one wheat and flip it into multiple flour. So far so good. But if you keep an eye on my character, you'll sometimes see this message pop up. Processing is not going as planned. What the heck does that mean? Well, it's basically saying that the craft has missed. No worries though, we don't lose any materials. It just means that my character needs to retry the craft. And those 6 seconds of processing time though, and they're gone. So naturally we want to work on reducing the chance of missing crafts. The chance of this happening is tied to your processing success rate. I'd show you in game, but the game doesn't really tell you that rate. Still, we know from the game files it's 70% at base. And you can increase the success rate all the way to 100% by using different items. I put them on screen. Now there's something funky going on with the success rate. Occasionally people in the life skill discord have reported that they fail processing even while having 100% success rate on sheet. And it seems like some items, for example the clang clang lightstone set, give less success rate than indicated. In the left skill community we think it has to do with some items applying their bonus additively and some multiplicatively, but it's hard to tell for sure. So here's what I recommend, simply overstack the success rate a bit. And you don't have to worry about any of those spaghetti mechanics. In any case, getting your success rate up is one of the top priorities for processing efficiently. Now let's talk about another way to boost our efficiency, mass processing. This one's a game changer. Right now we're stuck processing grain one by one and man that's like watching paint dry. But check this out, I'll equip my processing stone and this unlocks the mass process feature in the processing menu. Oh and quick note, if you're on a seasoned character, you won't be able to use processing stones which is needed for mass processing, so you wanna switch over to a normal character for this. And once we select mass processing, we're gonna process this whole stack of wheat in one go. How, you ask? Well, mass processing lets us process items in batches. The size of the batch depends on your processing mastery. And you can look up your batch count in the character menu on the processing mastery. At my mastery, I can process 222 items at once. That's because I'm in the 1800 bracket, and I'm only gonna see an increase in batches if I reach the next bracket, which is at 1900, so 100 mastery apart. 
That's a pretty big step, but fortunately for lower mastery brackets, those steps are way smaller, like 20, 40 or 50 mastery. So keep in mind that for processing, the mastery brackets are not evenly spaced, like for other life skills. So yeah, processing this whole stack of grain in one go, that sounds pretty OP, right? But there's one little catch. Mass processing takes exactly 10 times longer than regular processing. Remember how we said one craft of flour takes 6 seconds? Well, now each craft is gonna take 6 times 10 equals 60 seconds. Timbers are the same, and then ores have a base time of 9 seconds, so mass processing them would take 90 seconds. There are also some headache-inducing exceptions, but we'll deal with them later. And I've seen so many people ask if math processing is even worth it, given that it takes longer, that I just gotta show you this. So let's just take a look at the mastery table. On the very first bracket, that's at beginner 1, and without any gear, you have 10 batches, but also 10 extra craft time, so no effective gain. But if you can somehow scrape together 20 mastery, now you have 11 batches and still 10 x craft time. So mass processing is already pulling ahead of regular processing. And this goes on until at 2k mastery you have 250 batches and still 10x craft time. So you're 25 times faster than with regular processing, so it's not even close. The bottom line here is that mass processing is the way to go, at least for items that can be mass processed, because not all items can. Notoriously, you can't mass process unstackable items like weapons and dried fish, and some processing types like simple cooking and simple alchemy don't allow mass processing at all. Fortunately for us, some of those recipes have alternative versions at a fixed 10x craft that you can activate by using an item bought at NPCs. So for example, you can simple arc 10 party elixirs at once by using a Bellab's Essence bought at material vendors, or you can pack 10 imperial boxes by using the heavy duty packaging card bought from old moon vendors. But overall, mass processing is a pretty powerful tool. It increases the speed at which we can go to materials by up to 25 times at 2k mastery. So mastery is a pretty big deal when it comes to breezing through stacks of items quickly. But how do we get our mastery up? Well, now would be a good time to talk about gear. The first piece of gear I want to talk about are processing stones. They come in three flavors, Logia, Tectum and Manos. You can enhance them like regular weapons with normal concentrated stones and fail stacks. But making fail stacks is a hassle and for life skill gear in general, I'd recommend you to just buy it. It's less effort and most times even cheaper. If you want to check for yourself, you can use my Manus Enhancing Sheet linked in the description. And the second important piece of gear are processing clothes, available in the flavors Logia, Kata and Manos. Of course you want to go for different tiers of gear depending on where you're at in the game. So I give you my recommendations for beginner, intermediate and advanced gear. Also a quick note, if you just want to try out processing you don't need any gear at all. Though to try out mass processing you want to have a processing stone which you can grab at Logia Farm west of Valia. But if you want to get serious about processing, here are the setups I recommend. When you're just starting out, a Trilogia stone and Trilogia clothes would be ideal. This setup will set you back around 300 million silver and provide a good amount of mastery. Also, I quickly want to mention that silver and bright clothes are an option, but they're not a great one. That's because they give success rate, while mastery clothes give mastery, and you can easily reach 100% success rate without the silver and bright clothes. So almost all of the time, mastery clothes are just straight out better. Once you've progressed a bit, you can consider upgrading to a Ted Tectron Stone and Ted Logia clothes for the intermediate setup. This setup will cost you about 1.2 build, but will significantly boost your mastery. For an advanced setup, I recommend getting a Ted Manos Stone and either Ted Carter or Ted Manos clothes. The Carter clothes are great bang for your buck, especially if you can get them from the market. The hell are contested though, so you probably have to enhance them yourself. If we take a look at the mana sheet, they will cost you about 1.5 bill to self-enhance, which is still a decent price considering they're only 50 mastery less than the Ted Manos clothes. And when it comes to the more expensive items like Ted Manos clothes or even pen processing stone, you should know that they have limited usefulness. And that's because processing mastery itself has its limitations. See, on the one hand it allows for faster processing, but on the other hand it reduces your AFK time since you run out of weight more quickly. So if you ask me how much mastery you need, I suggest having just enough so that your character barely runs out of weight by the time you return to your PC and can refresh processing. 
Regarding accessories, I recommend using whatever you already have on your main life skiller. While having some mastery on accessories is beneficial, spending billions of silver on them just for processing is not a great investment. Also keep in mind that the mastery from your gear is in addition to the mastery you already get just for having higher processing level. Finally, let's talk about lightstones and artifacts. The Clang Clang set is the go-to option because it offers a range of useful buffs at a fairly affordable price. When it comes to artifacts, you have the choice between processing success rate, mastery or EXP. The processing artifacts are bunched in with the Imperial Delivery System, so you can get them by handing in either cooking or alchemy boxes. If you have multiple processing artifacts and the luxury to choose, I suggest using either success rate or mastery. Specifically, you want to first cap your success rate, which will take one or even two success rate artifacts, and beyond that you can go for more mastery. Now let's talk about crystals. For now, we're going to stick with the standard weight setup that can be used for other life skills as well. There's also a new region coming out soon that will bring specialized life skill crystals where you can choose between EXP and mastery. I can't tell you yet how viable they're gonna be, but I'll pen a comment with my thoughts once the new region comes out. For the last part of the guide, I want to talk about a few more things to make your life easier and help you get started on your processing journey. When it comes to convenience, there's one thing we have to talk about, the Pearl Shop costume. It's totally optional, but can make processing so much more convenient. With this costume, you will get a whopping 3% success rate bonus. But the real selling point is, of course, that it's cute as heck. Just kidding, the real deal is that you get to process from storage. This works with any storage keeper, but unfortunately it doesn't work with storage containers. And honestly, storage processing is pretty OP. It means you don't have to keep the input materials in your inventory, which effectively lets you process for longer. How much longer depends on the recipe. On heavy recipes like timber, you can be AFK for up to 4 times longer. However, for light recipes like flour, dough and cheese, which become heavier with each craft, the costume won't extend your AFK time at all. This also goes for imperial boxes. So the bottom line is that if you process a lot and mainly do timber and ore, the processing costume will be a huge quality of life upgrade. But if you mainly process light materials or imperial boxes, you'll do fine without it. And finally, there's one more thing to sort out. If you try to process items like plywood or pure crystals for the first time, you'll probably get dismissed and the game won't let you complete the craft. That's because these recipes require special knowledge. There's six pieces of beginner and skilled knowledge and you can get them from two quest lines. You can find them via the quest tab on a suggested and then life certificate training paradigm and skilled paradigm. The quest line itself is not too difficult, but lots of people have trouble starting it, so I will release a separate video walking you through the quest line and helping you with troubleshooting. In any case, here's a quick summary of the two quest lines. Also, regardless of knowledge, sometimes BDO will straight up not let you process some items. And that's because, and I'm not kidding, the weather. There's two notorious offenders here. Drying is disabled if it's raining or snowing, which you can check next to your minimap, and filtering needs windy weather, which has literally no way to check. So if a processing type is greyed out, there are two things you can do, either swap channels or wait a bit. People have also reported that it doesn't rain inside caves, but I have not been able to confirm that. Processing has a lot of these cracks actually, like the wheat flour from earlier we said gives 1 to 4 items and takes 6 seconds or 60 seconds with mass processing. While that's true for some recipes, there's also a lot of variance here. There are some notable exceptions to the proc rate, like high IT items tend to give only 1 to 3 items and simple alchemy and cooking give 1 item per craft. Also, the processing time is a huge mess. You got your 6 and 60, but also 9 and 90, and these are just the common rates, but there are also some crazy exceptions, like cheese taking 9 seconds with regular and 60 seconds with mass processing. Anyway, just wanted to get this out there. You can look up all of this in this table in my written guide, where I went out and manually tested a bunch of recipes. Alright, so where do we go from here? What are the next steps? Well, if you haven't already, now would be a great time to start up a worker empire. Processing materials your workers have brought in can be a solid way to provide materials for other life skills like cooking or trading or even just as an income stream. The worker system just got a pretty big rework, so even if you already have a worker empire running, it might not be a bad idea to make some revisions. I can recommend a great tool for planning out your worker empire, Shredder's Worker Man. The website shows a ranking of the best nodes and you can even simulate and optimize your own worker empire. 
If you want to make full use of these features though, I recommend you spend a bit of time on reading up on how to use them properly. You can do that in the about page and by browsing through the discussion on the Lifescale Discord. In any case, I hope I could give you an introduction to processing and help you get started. In the next video, we're going to look at how to power level and how to process for profit. Until then, take care.